In today's video, we look at body-brain integration and we introduce you to brain rule number one. Defend it. Your brain, that is. In this first video of our series, we learn about how our brains work. Knowing your brain allows you to understand how to maximise your mental capacity. The good news is you can change your brain. To understand how to optimise our bodies and brains, it's necessary to look back at human evolution. So if we look back in time, we'll see that our species became the dominant species on Earth because we adapted best to our environment. So for example, we created weapons to hunt animals. We created fire to keep us warm. We planted crops so we could grow food to feed our brains. And we actually mastered this environment better than any other animal. But in the last 50 years and in the Western world, we have changed our environment. And we have changed it to such an extent that we are no longer masters of this new environment. Our human genome has evolved over 45,000 years in an environment of high physical activity and natural foods. And in order to be optimal, we need to bring back that high physical activity and optimal food. That way, we can once again become the masters of our environment. As recently as 10 years ago, we believed that our brain was pretty much fixed by the time we became adults, and it just decayed. What we now know is that we can change our brain and we can grow new nerve cells at any time in life if we do the right things. And if we look inside the brain, we'll actually see it's comprised of 100 billion neurons. That's one of those numbers that you think, hmm, that's pretty big. Let me put it into context. An area the size of the pinhead in your brain contains 30,000 neurons and no two of them touch. How cool is that? Our brain is about neurotransmitters and it's about a big ecosystem. And we need to look at our bodies and brains as one integrated ecosystem if we want to be optimal. There are a lot of trilogies out there, but for me, the ultimate trilogy is the interaction between brain, mind and body and how there is a dynamic interplay between all three. For example, we know that within the brain, our neurochemistry or neurobiology affects our hormones and the health of our body, but is also dependent on the health of our body for optimum neurotransmitters. We also know that our neurotransmitters in our brain will affect our thoughts and our behaviours that arise from the mind, but that our thoughts and our behaviours can in turn impact on our neurotransmitters in the brain. And lastly, we know now that our thoughts and our behaviours, particularly negative thoughts and stress, will have a negative impact on the health of your body and vice versa, the health of your body has a big contributory role to your thoughts and behaviours in your mind. If you want health and vitality, and especially if you want to be a peak performer, the key message is that you need to adopt behaviours, which we will discuss, that are geared towards integrating body, brain and mind together as one ultimate trilogy. Okay, so what else do we need to know? to get our mind, body, and brain working together. Let's talk about that now. The human brain is designed to minimize danger, but maximize reward. Which one will it do first? Well, let's have a look at what happens in caveman times. I come out of my cave, and there's a saber-toothed tiger. Do I, A, go and give it a pat, or B, get the heck out of there. I know what you're thinking, get the heck out of there. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Humans, when they see something that could be dangerous, they will engage the fight or flight response. And that is a huge neurochemical dump 
out of the brain that stimulates us to fight or run away. Our body responds well to short, dangerous situations. Unfortunately for humans, we have exactly the same biology in response to what we call chronic stress. Stress that doesn't go on for 30 seconds or a minute, it may go on days, weeks, months, or even years. But the chemistry is the same. The human brain is designed to make its best decisions in an unstable, outdoor environment in more or less constant motion. Within the brain, there's two little parts vying for control. There's the emotional brain, the amygdala, the stress response, and tugging against that is the prefrontal cortex, the one, the part of the brain that wants reasoned, rational control. This tug of war has happened constantly, especially in stressful situations. We think that the prefrontal cortex, the part that wants to grab rational control, develops through childhood. What we also think in neuroscience is that the way that's developed has changed for humans in the last 50 to 100 years. We think this whole control taking part, the prefrontal cortex, was fully developed in 14 year olds. We now think in modern society, that part of the brain isn't developed until we're 29. What's happened? Why are our brains so different than just a few generations ago? We think it has something to do with what we call the battery child generation. This is not powering your children, children with batteries. This is the inside PlayStation generation. The brain is designed to operate and develop in an unstable outdoor environment in more or less constant motion. A good example of this for a child might be climbing a tree. Climbing trees is dangerous. It has risk and that allows your brain to change, develop and control and evaluate emotion and risk. The brain minimises danger, maximises reward. Let me tell you a story from my 40th birthday. I woke up and my wife said, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia? Yeah, the stage show. We should go as a family. Any 40 year old man will know how you feel when you hear that from your wife. Luckily, my two boys arrived in the bedroom and they said, no, that's for girls. We need to climb trees. I agreed and we headed for a tree adventure. The tree adventure involved saddling up, climbing up trees 10 to 30 metres off the ground and walking along thin wires between trees. It was fantastic. Away I went, balanced between some trees. My favourite part was swinging with my boys like Tarzan from one tree to the other. Fantastic. The whole time I was never scared. How could that be? The answer of course is that I had a safety harness on. With a safety harness, my prefrontal cortex, that part of my brain that controlled the wild horse of emotion, the amygdala, was in control. And I was able to enjoy myself, swing like Tarzan from one tree to another, without being overcome by the stress response, falling into a gibbering mess, unable to take a small step in case I fell. The brain minimises danger, but maximises reward. The prefrontal cortex is the one that helps us maximise reward, and that's the one we want to be in control. Right, the good news is, you can change your brain and become a peak performer. The first step is to protect your brain from harm. The first brain rule is defend it. How would you like to live the last five years of your life? Would you like to be lucid of mind? Or would you like to have Alzheimer's where your brain has shrunk, you can't remember any of your friends, and you've lost the ability to process emotions? Because that sort of thing happens when we abuse our brain throughout life. This is about defending our brain so that we can future-proof our brain and have a healthy brain and body for as long as we live. 
So we need to think about all the sorts of toxins and things that can damage our brain. One obvious thing is traumatic brain injury. So things like wearing a seatbelt, wearing a helmet when you're on your bike or motorbike, but also being careful when you're up ladders. 50% of brain injury in the over 50s is guys falling off ladders. We also know another thing that is hugely important for your brain is sleep. When we sleep, not only does our body regenerate, but our brain regenerates. And we know now that we need between seven and eight hours sleep in order to get effective restoration of our bodies and our brains. Something else to defend it against are toxins such as smoking. One of the worst things you can do for your brain. And take alcohol. Lots of public messages about it being good for your heart. And that's true in small amounts. However, no alcohol is good for your brain. Every bit kills brain cells. Another thing that we should defend our brain against is drugs. Although drugs are fun at the time, what they do is they hijack something called the reward pathway in the brain. The reward pathway is there to enable us to repeat behaviors. We have natural rewards such as love, nurturing, sex, food, and water. But our society has created what I call nuclear rewards, where we get a tsunami of dopamine released in the brain that hijacks our reward pathway and creates addiction. So every drug is messing with the neurotransmitters and the structure of our brain. So this is about a risk management strategy and minimizing the toxins that will actually decay your brain and being mindful to defend it. Okay, by now each of you should know a little bit more about how your brain works. We've looked at how your brain, body and mind are completely integrated. Guess what? There is no one coming to save you. But you can save yourself.